friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the new Lawn Fawn You Goat This plus Hey There and Party Animal. I've stamped all the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So the first color the combo that I'm going to use is E40 and E41. I'm going to do the lighter parts of the goat's body with these shades. I want it to be kind of like a soft, creamy white. So I'm going to start with the larger goat. It could be the mama or the daddy, whatever you want it to be. I'm going to take that E41 and lay in my shadows for the majority of the body. For this one, I'm just going to call it her. Um, I'm going to do the spots in a contrasting color. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E41 and let that fade into the white. Um, there was still too much of a little line there though, so I did go back with that E40 and just add some soft flicks of color to help that fade a bit more into that white space. And then I'm going to come and do the other little babies as well. I wanted them to look like they were all part of a family. So I'm going to do this um, goat way up at the top there to kind of match. This one's going to have just the one spot on the forehead for a contrasting color. So it'll be mostly a little white or cream goat. And then for the smaller goat at the bottom, I'm going to flip it. And for that one, I'm going to do the spots on the body to be the lighter shade. And then I'll do the majority of the body with the contrasting color. So there's so many different ways that you could color these goats, but I decided to give them some brown spots. And I'm going to use E43, E44, and E47 for those. I'm also going to color in their hooves with the E47. I used the E47 and the E44 on the mama, as hers were just slightly larger. But when I get to the babies, I'm just going to use that E47 to color their hooves in because um, that E47 is super dark, so it's a, a good replacement for a black if I don't want to add any black in, which I didn't in this situation. So I'm just keeping my shadows where they were on the white parts of the goat's body as well, so along the back and on the hindquarters, at the top of the head, and then pulling that color down with the E44 and the E43, and I gave the goat a little beard. Do female goats have beards? I'm not really sure. So maybe he is a billy goat. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I also did his horns or her horns with the E47 and E44. So for the little goat down at the bottom, who's going to be a darker goat, he's going to be brown and white. So I'm using those same shades, just adding that shadow in with the E47. Little shadow under his chin area where his head would be casting a shadow down the backs of his legs. And then I'm blending that out with the E44 once again. I really like this rich brown combo for critters because um, it's more of a dustier shade. So it just looks really natural for... A lot of different color uh, critters. I would use these for bears and um, monkeys. A lot of different critters this combo works great for. So I'm filling in now with my lightest shade, which is the E43. Just kind of softening up those lines there and making sure everything is smoothly blended. And then for the last little goat, I'm just going to do the patch on his forehead with these shades. So um, just that E47 up at the very top and then blending down toward his eye with the lighter two shades. And then filling in his hooves solid with that E47 like I mentioned earlier. I also wanted to give them some rosy cheeks and also color in their little noses. So I used R11 and R20 for that. R20 first on the cheek and the nose. 
and then I'm just going to go over the edge of that with the R11 to soften that up a bit so it blends into the color of their hides and that will dry back a little bit as well. I wanted to keep this pink in the background images here or accessory images so I'm going to add in R22 just to brighten that up a bit and I'll do the frosting on the little birthday cake and then I'm also going to do the ribbon on one of the gifts. I'm just putting the darkest at the bottom on those ribbons and blending toward the top on both the part that wraps around the box and on the bow at the top. And then I'll also do one of the labels on the tin cans just to have another pop of color somewhere else on the card. And those tin cans are from You Goat This and Hey There. There's one in each that's facing the opposite direction just to give you more variety. And I stamp one of them twice and one of them three times. I'm going to go back to my dark browns. I'm going to add in the E49 and color in the chocolate cake. So it looks like a nice dark chocolate, which was always my favorite. Next, I wanted to work on the hay bales. So I started with YR20, YR21, and YR23. These have a lot of brown tone in them and a little bit of an orangey tint that I thought would look really nice in this scene and just um, be more of a realistic hay color than something that was really bright yellow. But um, I am going to end up going over this in a little bit with some different colors and you'll see that uh, when I get to it. But for now, I started at the bottom with the YR23 blended up with the YR21 and then use the YR20 for the lightest. And then for the top part, I just started the shadow at the back of the hay bale and then brought that forward so that the highlight would be meeting at the top corner there of the entire hay bale, if that makes sense. So I'm going to finish up the second one and then that's where I realized it was just a little bit too dull for my liking. So I decided to add in some Y11 and Y13. So I'm going to keep the YR23 as my darkest and I'm going to do a second layer on these hay bales. But then I'm going to switch to the Y13 for my mid-tone. And you can see that's adding a lot more of a brighter yellow tone, which I think layered on top of the duller yellow helps it from looking like too fake and plasticky. You know, it still has a more natural looking hay color. I used these shades for the flame on the candle and another one of the labels on the tin cans. And then I'm going to do one of the gifts as well. And again, I'm just going to start the shadow at the bottom and blend toward the top with the lighter two shades. So that will um, just pull your eye around the scene to have those little pops of color represented in different places on the card. So I'm switching to a brighter blue combo and I chose B21, B24, and B26. I'm going to do another one of the gifts. I needed a birthday card, so that this would be the perfect opportunity to um, add in some little birthday accessories with these adorable little goats. And I'll do another label on the tin cans. And I'm also going to do the ribbon on the yellow gift. And I'd like to use a color combo in at least two places, preferably three on a card um, whenever possible. I also did the candle in blue and then I'm moving on to a purple combo. I don't use purples that often, but I really do like them. And uh, this is one of the combos that I really enjoy. Purples can be tricky to work with, but this one does do well for me. It's V12, V15, and V17. 
Next up, I'm going to add in some greens and I went with yellow greens for these accessories because I'll use some darker greens for the grasses in a little bit. So I went with YG00, YG01, and YG03 for the last gift and label so that there's some nice spring tones in this scene. For the tin cans, I'm going to go with C1 and C3. I feel like the cool grays are the most metallic looking of the grays. Um, I'm actually doing a comparison video on the four different gray families that might actually be up before this video. So if you're interested in seeing what the differences between each of the gray families are, um, go ahead and check my channel because that one might be the video right before this one. Um, but anyway, I wanted to add a little bit more contrast. Those two colors weren't cutting it for me. So I added in the C5 to just darken that up in a couple places and then blended that back out again with the C1. And then for my grasses, I wanted to go with uh, something a bit brighter and darker. So I went with YG05, YG07, and YG09. Because they're still in that same YG family and very close to the YGs that I used on the gift and the label of the tin can, they're gonna match really well and fit well in this scene but um, just add another contrast to it by you know, beefing up that saturation with these darker shades. So I'm just flicking in some color there and then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dyes. For my background elements, I've die cut some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. I used the largest of the small mini slimline stackables. I also used the new slimline picket fence border to cut out another piece. And then my third piece is using one of the slimline grassy hillside borders. So I'm going to start with the background piece and I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil and some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink to add a little bit of a cloudy sky on this background. Only a little bit of the sky will be showing in the final card, so I'm not gonna blend the entire way down the panel. I'm just gonna do maybe two or three rows of these clouds, and I, I think I did three, and in the end, only two ended up showing. So um, if you're recreating a scene like this, you really don't have to go very far down with this if your grassy border, you know, takes up a good portion of the bottom of the scene, which mine does, because I wanted to fit all of those little um, elements on the, the scene, all those little gifts and tin cans and everything. So I'm just turning that stencil and working my way down until I had about half of it covered. And then I did add a little color at the bottom just to remove that stark white, just in case any of that would show. But like I said, it, it doesn't in the end card. But I'm going to add some splatter detail to this as well to give it a bit of movement. So I just like to press it onto an acrylic block first and water it down and then use a fine paintbrush to splatter that. That way you get smaller sized dots and I just feel like I get a bit more control that way. Um, some of it was a little heavy, so I grabbed a paper towel and blotted up what I didn't want, and then I'm gonna set that aside to dry while I work on the grassy border. And for this one, I'm gonna start with some Twisted Citron Distress Oxide ink. I want the bottom of the grass to be lighter and the top part to be darker. So I'm starting with my lightest shade down at the bottom, and then I'm gonna bring in some mowed lawn. I'm not gonna to blend too much because I don't wanna bend those little grasses. So I'm more pouncing on there and then just blending when I get towards the transition area where I don't have to be as careful. Um, but then when I go back and blend in with the Twisted Citron, um, ink blending tool once again that will help smooth out any of those little you know 
marks that are left behind by that ink blending tool. So everything is a lot more smooth now. And then I wanted to darken that up even further. I felt like a bit more contrast is never a bad idea. So I went in with some Rustic Wilderness and this time I'm sticking just really close to the top edge, just on those grasses and then a little bit below. And then I'm gonna blend over that with the Mowed Lawn uh, ink blending tool once again just to soften everything back up and then I'll go one more time over that with the Twisted Citron and then I did want some splatter on this one as well and I'm gonna use all three shades I really like how some of the lighter splatters of the Distress Oxide add a nice pop to the darker blended areas so that's why I decided to use all three shades so I did the Twisted Citron first and then the Mowed Lawn and then I'm going in with that Rustic Wilderness and adding a bit of that darker splatter as well. This will just keep my grass and my sky looking consistent and keep that kind of sense of movement all across the scene. So once that's dry, I'm going to pop that into my Misty and I'm going to stamp my sentiment in some Versafine Onyx Black ink. I like this ink when I'm using the Distress Oxides because it just lays really well over it while other inks really struggle to not turn cloudy on top of the Distress Oxide. And the sentiment I'm using is from Hey There and it says happy birthday from the whole herd. It is a two part sentiment. I just pieced the two pieces together to create that. And then I'm gonna also stamp on the inside of my card, which is made from Sticky Note cardstock from Lawn Fawn, and I'm stamping in Sunflower Ink. And by the way, that card is six inches by six inches, and then I scored it in half at the three inch mark, so it ends up being three inches tall by six inches wide. And I'm using another goat and a gift, and the sentiment I built says, Hope your day is the goat greatest of all time. For the focal panel, I'm going to adhere that grassy border to the picket fence border. And by the way, I did have to be careful which part of the die I was using when I was die cutting these since they are a regular length slimline die and I'm using them on a mini slimline card. So I just made sure that I was using the same portion of that die so that the two pieces would still line up exactly. And then I also wanted to add in some pattern paper. So I'm using the new Gotta Have Gingham Rainbow and I chose the um, pink gingham that is on like the side stripe, the diagonal. So I trimmed that out with the largest of the large mini slimline stackables and I'm going to glue that to my card front. So that's gonna cover up that card base completely. I didn't want any of that yellow cardstock showing through. I wanted that to be more of like a surprise when you open up the card. And then I'm going to adhere my focal panel down to that card front. You could also pop it up for a bit of added dimension. I decided just to glue it flat for today. Um, I felt like there was gonna be enough dimension created by the images in the scene. So I'm gonna start from the center of the card and build my way out for the scene here. I knew that I wanted these two hay bales to be kind of stacked together and for one to be tilted at an angle, kind of creating a little ramp for the goats to play on. And that is where my um, darker goat is gonna go. That's gonna be the one who's having the birthday. So I'm gonna pop him up on the flatter um, hay bale. So his ears are right below that sentiment, kind of pointing up at it, so it draws your eye. And then his little brother is going to be running in from the left-hand side, so I'm just gonna add him over there. And I'm putting them a little bit higher up in the scene so that I have room for all of those little accessory images. And then mama or daddy, whichever one you want it to be, is gonna go over on the right-hand side. So then I'm gonna add in some of these grasses. I wanna tuck them behind some of the 
hay bales and things before that glue dries. So I'm just trying to um, fill the scene in and make it look nice and full and interesting. So um, having those grasses for the goats to munch on um, just kind of adds more detail, which I love more detail in a scene. I'm also going to balance the grass on the right with one on the left. And then I'm going to start adding in the little gifts. And some of them I'm gonna do at like little angles just to give them a little bit more whimsy. Um, so they're not just kind of flat across the bottom of the scene. I'm also gonna add the little cake down in front of the hay bale. Um, I know that candle probably shouldn't be so close to the hay, but it's a card. It's not realistic, so that's all right. Um, and then I'm going to start adding in these little tin cans. Um, when I was a little girl, I used to listen to this record. And yes, it was a record on a record player. So I'm dating myself here, but... Anyway, I used to listen to this record as a little child um, called The Adventures of Bernie the Billy Goat, and I absolutely loved that record. I listened to it so much. Um, I can still remember the songs to this day, decades later, um, but in the song, it was talking about what the billy goat liked to eat, and... Um, Bernie said that he liked to eat old tin cans, cardboard, and paper. He didn't care one bit. Just make sure when you feed him, there's plenty of it. And so I had to add these tin cans into the scene in remembrance of that song that I loved so much and that whole record. So um, that's going to complete this little scene here. But of course, we can't be done until we've added some sparkle. So I'm taking my favorite Stardust Stickles and I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to the ribbons on the birthday gifts. And I also added some to the flame on the candle and the frosting on the birthday cake. And then I added just a little line of glitter to the edge of each of the labels on the tin cans. So there's a bit of sparkle there. Um, it's subtle, but... You can really see it when you tip it into the light there. So I'm going to give you another peek at the inside. And please do me a favor and hit that like button if you enjoyed it. You can leave me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell. Any and all interaction helps so much with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. Please go ahead and check the links down below if you're interested in picking up any of these products for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.